วัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ Good morning everybody, the lecturer and the student from Mahidol University International College, uh, and on behalf of the Selin Thorn International in Grand Top Park, uh, we are so glad to have an opportunity to work on all of you, all of you today. Uh, do you know? Have you ever heard about the Selin Thorn International in Grand Top Park? Okay, someone have ever heard, right? Okay, uh, the, uh, the, the name Celine Thorn, you know who is named Celine Thorn? Hmm? You know? <laughs> ah, uh, Thai people call her Pate, right? Okay, so this part is uh, estimated after her working on in the park to recovery of the uh, national. <laughs> Welcome everybody from Mahidol University. It's the international cost of the size. It's a very, that's very good opportunity that you receive in uh, this park. In the park is uh, like the center of the mangrove uh, distribution of the nodules. Oh, is many countries. This uh, I now when I work here is a focal point to connect with the, uh, many countries in the Southeast Asia and in the Indian Ocean. So that should be a split time to work together about the mangroves. And this center, we invite so many experts to come to work, to do workshop with, with us. And after that, we try to do the strategy plan for the Southeast Asia. And also we do the transboundary management uh, uh, for the Thailand, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar in the future, and also uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. It's many country. This will be, will be the, uh, uh, when we become the ASEAN like uh, same country. So uh, all of us uh, are friends. So we can help to uh, each other to do with the mangrove in the uh, in the service area or in the area in the world in the future. I think in the future is uh, maybe some person uh, will be the expert in this field yeah? because of uh, many person from the international course come to work with me when uh, they study master degree when I work in the marine coastal department in Ministry of Natural Resource and Environment <laughs> and now they become the important person of the mangrove and also some person is uh, like uh, will be the lecturer of the university, like the Kansas University, when uh, she, she studied doctor course in Mahidol University, and also the son is to become the like the coordinator in the fields of the Bangalore work for the Bangalore for the future, and the salary will be high, uh, higher than me. <laughs> I, I believe no, but my, my start now is for you. So you are lucky to study in, uh, in Mahindong University. We look for the person who can work with us in the city Thorn Park. We need the person that's uh, good English and come to help us in the future. When you visit here, if you uh, uh, visit the mangrove of the city Thorn International Park, if you interest, you can do TC here for the master degree or the doctor degree in the future. And we need uh, this person to... After we finish our presentation, we will receive the exhibition of the uh, conservation on energy for with four exhibitions. And then we will go to visit the micro forest together. Okay, the first one is a video presentation. Okay, I think you all of you are ready. So please turn on the video of the station. The pristine nature 
at fertile natural resources on the Matrukatayawan Palace's premises are telling a true story about how conservation of natural resources and environment has been accomplished through combined efforts. and environmental crises are becoming so severe that their impacts are suffered by people throughout the world. It is therefore everybody's duty to pay closer attention to nature conservation for our own sake. Back in the year 1924, his Majesty King Wijarawood, or Rama VI, promulgated a royal decree that the Maruka Taiwan Palace, a royal residence, was to be demarcated and declared as an animal conservation and protection area. This decree marked the beginning of natural resources and environmental conservation in Thailand. But after the King Rama VI's demise, his royal residence was deserted. Local people moved in and inhabited the area, cutting down all the trees and causing the soil to become sandy and arid. Without soil holding plants, the soil surface was eroded by rainwater and slid down to the shores and became sedimentary deposits. Because there was insufficient fresh water to push such deposits into the sea, they accumulated in the estuarine swamps and eventually choked all the mangroves. His Majesty King Pumipon paid a royal visit to people in Prachuap Khan and Petburi provinces. Seeing the people's hardship caused by drought and other problems, His Majesty proposed an initiative for Hoi Sai Royal Development Study Center to be founded for natural and environmental conservation purposes. Was to sustain a moist forest by installing check downs in mountain ridges to slow the flow of water and keep sand and stones from depositing in lower areas. Due to the slower flow, the soil could absorb more water and sustain its underground moisture that nourished the plants. Gradually, a verdant forest was revived. In 1994, Her Royal Highness Princess Maha Chakri Sirintorn, while staying at the Maruka Taiwan Palace, suggested that a sustainable area be designated for experiments on mangrove cultivation and mangrove forest restoration in order to restore an estuarine ecosystem. In addition, the princess recommended that long-term attempts be made to conserve the mangroves and propagate them for other estuarine swamps in the area. Since the first mangrove tree was planted by Her Royal Highness Princess Maha Chakri Sirindorn, several other projects have been implemented to fulfill the princess's commitment to energy and natural resources conservation. In 2000, collaborative efforts by the three organizations in charge of maintenance of the Maruka Taiwan Palace's premises, the Border Control Police Bureau, Waisai Royal Development Study Center, and the Maruka Taiwan Palace Foundation, under the patronage of Her Royal Highness Princess Pechadat Raja Sudat Siri Sopa Padnawadi, 
agreed to found an environmental park to commemorate Her Royal Highness Princess Mahachakri Sirindorn's 48th birthday in 2003. Located inside the Rama Sixth Camp area, the park was named the Sirindorn International Environmental Park. Since then, the Sirintorn International Environmental Park has served as a living nature museum where knowledge of conservation of energy, environment and natural resources can be acquired, applied and extensively disseminated both domestically and internationally. To fulfill such a goal, the Sirintorn International Environmental Park is equipped with learning resources and a wide range of facilities both of which are conducive to knowledge dissemination and international level training. This Energy for Environment Center, which is supported by the Energy Conservation Promotion Fund, Energy Policy and Planning Office, and the Ministry of Energy, serves as a center for dissemination of energy and environment conservation knowledge. Inside this center, not only can visitors enjoy its various exhibitions, but they can also visit the Energy and Environment Library, where books and other learning resources relating to energy and environment are available. The main exhibitions by the Energy for Environment Centre are the exhibitions of Royal Initiatives. These exhibitions feature an entire range of nature and environment conservation initiative projects by His Majesty King Pumipong. Her Majesty Queen Sirikit, Her Royal Highness Princess Si Nakarindra, the late Princess Mother, and Her Royal Highness Princess Mahachakri Sirindon. The Energy for Environment exhibition consists of three themes. The first, Value of Energy, focuses on energy crisis and alternative energy resources. The second, Let's Save Energy, features what each person can do to save energy and reduce waste. The last, Energy Technologies Worth Knowing, presents energy generating technologies alongside energy saving innovations. The Sufficiency Economy Exhibitions feature His Majesty King Pumibon's philosophy of sustainable development based on the principle of economic sufficiency. Besides, means of energy conservation based on the principle of sufficiency economy are also exhibited. Moreover, the park also conducts mobile exhibitions. Exhibits, learning resources and video screens are installed aboard small size four-wheel trucks. On a regular basis, the mobile teams show energy and environment conservation films in communities and schools. Inside the Sirintorn International Environmental Park is the Energy and Environment Conservation Camp where organizations can hold overnight training sessions. In addition to accommodation, this camp provides a tent ground, an outdoor activity ground, and a pier for eco-tourism boat rides. This is the International Environment Camp, which is supported by the Institute for the Promotion of Teaching Science and Technology. This camp is a venue where developmental training programs for teachers of science, mathematics, and technology can take place. The facilities include a learning center, a conference hall, and different types of accommodation. Here is the Sirintorn International Environmental Park's Regional Center of Expertise, or RCE Cha'am. This center, accredited by the United Nations University as a learning facility for sustainable development, has given rise to the Education for Sustainable Development Center, or ESDC, which has made the Sirintorn International Environmental Park a full-scale regional and international learning center. Apart from receiving education, participants and visitors to the Sirintorn International Environmental Park are also welcome to the Souvenir Center inside the Energy for Environment Center area where a wide range of souvenirs are available.
The Sirinton International Environmental Park also promotes renewable energy through its Energy Innovations Learning Center. It's here that different forms of renewable energy are demonstrated, such as solar energy and wind energy, as well as demonstrations of modern, practical energy generating means for community level consumption, as prototypes to promote alternative energy sources for local communities. The Sirintorn International Environmental Park also proudly presents its Nature Classroom, which is the biodiversity in the park's environs. Visitors, especially children, can relish at first hand the experience of an ecosystem at the Princess Mangrove Plantation. In addition, there are several other eco-activities for visitors to enjoy, such as bird watching, eco-tourism, mangrove planting, and releasing aquatic animals back into nature. Furthermore, the park uses an integrated constructed wetland for wastewater treatment by natural processes. And to protect coastal erosion, the park has constructed breakwaters and groins, the former to lessen the impact of waves and the latter to increase the amount of sand on the shores. The jetties can also ensure unimpeded shoreward and seaward flow of seawater, maintaining an ecological balance suitable for aquatic creatures' reproduction and return into the sea. Not far from the Sirinton International Environmental Park are some of His Majesty the King's Royal Initiative projects worth visiting and studying. Such projects include Huaisai Royal Development Study Centre, the King's Royally Initiated Lempakbia Environmental Research and Development Project, His Majesty the King's Initiative Hapkapong Project, Suen Songde Prasid Nagarin Trabaro Maratajonani and Chang Huaman Royal Project. All of these projects have been implemented in the best interest of the Thai people. Because of His Majesty the King's boundless mercy, which has filled the hearts of all nature-loving ties. Every sector, public and private, has selflessly devoted itself to fulfilling His Majesty's initiatives. All have one common goal to accomplish, to restore forests, biodiversity and natural resources in our region, country and the world as an invaluable gift for all mankind. Hey, this is all about the Sinto International Environmental Park. I hope all of you, nobody is sleeping, right? <laughs> okay, uh, before we go out for the city exhibition or the mangrove forest, I have a brief information about the park that not appears in the uh, video presentation. Uh, we call the Energy for Environment Center. It's a, uh, office of the, the park and also the, the learning center on the environment and energy. And the second is a, uh, we call the Princess Sirinton Mangrove Garden. Uh, that according to the video presentation, you see the princess plant the mangrove tree, right? So this is, uh, this is the, the, the area that she planted the mangrove and we will see it today. Uh, the starting point of the Sirinton International Environmental Park start from this picture. Do you know uh, what happened in the in this area? You know, guess from the from the video. 